Welcome to part two. Now, divine masculine and feminine are meeting up through the mind. We're clearing up conflict within the mind so that we can meet up, transformed. And as we clear up this conflict within the mind, we're going to understand that how we act impacts our environment as much as how our environment impacts how we act. So the feminine, as we've been discussing, has shown up to meet up to end cruelty. But the masculine hasn't shown up yet, and that's because he's working on a commitment. And remember, feminine, you have masculine within you. Masculine, you have feminine within you. We're all doing this as one. We're all doing this together, and our situations are all unique, so let's keep that in mind. Now, we got, we were getting an activation in part one as to why the masculine hasn't shown up yet. We got the three of shapeshifters, and we got into this. We, we, we got into what's going on here. Now we're going to share the message officially as to what's happening with the swords and the cups. Because we know we drink from the cup of lust. So now we're going to heal from lust and fruit and co-create more joy. This is a restoration back to the six of cups. But there's a connection to the nine of cups. And we will get into that the next time we meet up. Three of, three of shapeshifters. Guys, we're having a dog party. Just hold on. Wait, wait, look at this. Guys, look, look, look. What do you think? I don't have nothing. See them? Okay, okay, let's get back to what we gotta do over here. Okay. Three of shapeshifters. Silk, moth, fertility, success, and fulfillment. Moths and butterflies are not only, not only similar, but together they form one of the largest insects orders, a reflection of the abundant opportunities for transformation when members of either group appears. Moths, like butterflies, are ancient symbols of change. There are some subtle differences between the two. Most butterflies have clubbed antennae and moths moths usually form a cocoon rather than a chrysalis i didn't know that moths also have fernalum which holds holds the two wings together during flight the silk moth is a powerful symbol of fertility success and fulfillment heralding a time of celebration Moths and butterflies always reflect transformation. The emergence of a moth from the cocoon reflects the final stage of, de of development. A new birth is occurring. What was hidden inside our gifts, our talents, and blessings is coming to the surface. Everything we've dis been discussing with this Aries solar, total solar eclipse to the full moon in Scorpio. We're... we're putting our insides outsides to change our environment because as much as our environment without changes us within when we attune within without must attune this is the law and remember we're the time of sharing our light sharing our gifts the appearance of the silk moth represents the time of creative Fertility, sexual, I mean, sexually, financially. So we're in creative fertility, sexually, financially, spiritually, and artistically. Joyous success. There it is. Look. Oh, guys. Whoa. Joyous. Ooh. Maybe we can't see this. Anyways, this says joyous success conclusions and new births are abundant now our hopes will be fulfilled well this is a restoration back to joy so let's get the, now the rest of the message because we talked about how this has to do with the mother and we are in the time of transcendence and productivity The mother. If you have drawn this card, the time has come to mother and be mothered.
be supported, help, let help in. Develop empathy in the situation you find yourself in. You're, you're neglecting your needs. You are, ne- and you're ne- maybe, guys, we're maybe neglecting other people's needs as well, okay? This is really powerful, look. We're doing all this at the same time. It's not necessarily one over the other. This is becoming multidimensional. And this is understanding that <clears throat> not only are we neglecting our own needs, but we're neglecting other people's needs and are expecting yourself or them to tough it out or be stronger than they or you really are. The practice you need to invite into your life is the practice of becoming softer. And many of us, if this is the mother, this is a time of the mother and nourishment and to just become softer so we can surrender to love and receiving love and giving love. The reality is often the strongest substances on earth, like water, are strong because they're soft. Now is the time to become softer. And this is also too, we're going to, like we're going to get in touch with ourselves rather than taking care of everyone else's problems and needs. We're going to learn how to take care of our own humbly, not selfishly, but humbly so that we're not resenting other people. And this is about like we're not going to be able to help anyone if our tel- if our tank is running on empty. And being concerned with doing everything right. We're rescuing people because we want to be rescued. You're helping because you want gratitude. You are doing what you're doing because you want something in return. Let yourself have what you want without manipulating to get it. And that's big because that's what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing within the hangman. We're seeing this. And it's connected to transcendence. You are being called to rise from struggles and limitations. Like a phoenix, and that's what he talks about in part one, we're the phoenix rising from the ashes. Okay, like a phoenix. And it's here, it's here somewhere, right here. We have to believe when we go within the hangman, like we just talked about, this is Pisces, okay? This is the energy of, this is using Pisces. As we discussed in part one. When we, we have to believe in what we've seen within the 12th house. And this is the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. The sign of reveries and mysteries and twin flames meeting up. But it's like a cloud. It's like a dream cloud. Dream clouds coming together. This is us miracles. Only God can do this, okay? Well, this is a stuff only God can do. And it's connected to, remember, picking the right cup because we have to make a choice with the cups. What? We, we drank from the cup of lust, remember? And we got into a debauch here. We went from the six of cups to the seven of cups by drinking from the cup of lust. But remember... God always has a plan. It was part of the plan so that we could be whole. So that we could be whole here and expand. So we go from the cup of lust to the right cup by making a choice. And we go from lust to joy. And this is how how we're doing it. We're the phoenix rising from the ashes. Okay, guys, we're going to hang up. Go to the third part. We're going to share this message and expand off that. See you there.